Hi, so today I'm going to be showing you how to install AppRite using Docker or Linux Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Amazon Lightfell service, but you can also follow along this tutorial if you'd like to use a different cloud provider, if you'd like to use a self-hosted solution such as VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. So AppRite is basically a self-hosted uh, backend as a service platform that provides our software developers with all the core APIs required to build any application. So if you currently work as a software developer or product manager actually, you can actually look into AppRite to actually provide solutions to some of the challenges that you're currently facing. Actually, AppRite comes with built-in functionalities to handle databases, to handle privacy and security, and to actually even handle uh, user authentication. So basically, the first thing I really need you to do is to open up your web browser and sign into your Amazon uh, Web Services account. If you don't have an Amazon Web Services account, you can click in the video description to sign up for a free tier account. So once you've actually opened up the Lysel web app, click on the Create Instance uh, button, and then click on OS Only, and then choose the Ubuntu 20.04 instance image. Select the $10 plan, and then we're going to name, set the name of this instance to upright server. So once you've set your name, click on the create instance button. So the instance is now deployed. So the next thing you need to do is to copy the IP address for the instance and then open up the Amazon Route 53 service. Click on hosted zones and then click on any one hosted zone for your any one of your registered domain names. So uh Click on create record and then on the record name, you need to type in your desired host name. So in my case, I'm just going to call this uh, record uh, app right server. And then on the value field, just type, paste in the public IP address for the instance and then click on the create records button. So we've created an A record that directly points to the Linux Ubuntu 20.04 uh, server. So go back to light cell and then disable IPv6 uh, networking. And then I also need you to create a rule that will actually open up uh, HTTPS port 443. So set the application to HTTPS and then click on the create button. So uh, once you've actually taken these actions, the next thing I need you to do is to click on the connect tab, scroll down and then click on the download default key button. So this action will actually download a key pay file that will actually allow us to connect to the instance via SSH. So right click on the file you've just downloaded and rename it to appwriterkey.pem. And then open up your SSH application and change your working directory to the downloads directory. And then to set the key pay file as read only, run the command chmod400 and type in the file name for the key pay file. And to connect to the instance via SSH, Run the command sshi, append the file name for the key pay file, and then type in the username for the instance at the public IP address for the instance. So you just need to go back to LightCell to copy that public IP and paste that into your terminal. So you should be connected uh, right about now. And uh, the first thing that we're actually going to do is uh, we're going to set a custom host name for this instance. So first run the command sudo su, and then let me just uh, move back into the root directory. And then uh, to set a custom host name, run the command hostname ctl, set hostname, and then we're going to actually set this hostname to AppRite server. So uh, once you've uh, written this, press end. And then the next thing we need to do is to edit the etc host configuration file. So just type in nano etc hosts and then in this file you need to add an entry. So type in 127.0.0.1 and then type in uh, upright server dot uh, your domain name dot com and then at the end you then also need to type in upright uh, server. And then once you've actually uh, typed in this information into this file, you just need to press on control O, press enter and then press control X. So let me just actually do that and then uh, you just need to press Control X. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is to install updates. So run command apt update and as you can see 
So just download in the Messenger updates that are needed before we actually kickstart the AppWriter installation. Then just reboot the instance for the changes to take effect. So next, we're going to download the some pre-requirements needed by AppWriter and Docker. And then we're actually going to install AppWriter using a uh, Docker command. So reconnect to the instance and then run the command to do the thing. Let me just clear my screen. And then I'm just going to create a screen session so that just in case if I lose access or if my internet connection drops, the installation won't be interrupted. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install some common software tools that we need for this setup actually. And then um, once we've actually installed these packages, I think I've got an issue on this command. So let me just make a correction on the CA certificates uh, uh, part. So let me just remove that spacing and then press end. Okay, so I've uh, fixed that issue. So if you experience that issue uh, during your installation, you just need to make that correction. So next, uh, I'm then going to add the GPG key for Docker onto my Ubuntu server. So just copy and paste that command then press end. And then next, I am then going to add the Docker repository to this uh, Ubuntu server by, by the SSH uh, command line interface. So just copy and paste that command to actually do that. Okay. And you'll see it will actually just run a quick APT update for, for, the, for the repository to actually be updated to the Ubuntu system. And next, we're going to run the command apt install docker ce. So we're actually installing the community edition of Docker. And as you can see, the installation is actually now in progress. So once the installation of Docker is complete, we're then going to proceed by checking if the Docker service is running. And then thereafter, we're then going to install our app writer. So just run the command system CTL status Docker. And as you can see, the server was actually running. And then next, to actually install app writer, you just need to issue out that command. So just copy and paste that command to then kickstart the app writer installation process. So it's actually now asking us to choose an HTTP port. So I'm just going to type in the default port 80. And then it's also asking us for us to set a port for HTTPS. So just type in 443. And then on the choose a secret API key field, I'm just going to type in any password here, but you need to make sure you type in a secure password if you're deploying in a production environment. And then next, you need to type in the your AppWriter host name, and then you need to then type in a DNS A record. So you just need to make sure you type in the same thing that you set as your host name in, the, in those two prompts. So as you can see, AppWriter is actually now successfully installed. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to open up a web browser, and we're going to log into the AppWriter uh, web app. So just open up a new tab and type in your domain name or your A record that is actually pointing to your server. So once you've actually typed this in, you'll actually see a sign up page which will actually prompt you to create a root user account. So I'm just going to set my name to admin and I'm going to type in my email address and then i'm then going to also type in a password so every time you start installing AppWriter, you actually see an interface like this and then uh just click on the sign up button okay so we've actually successfully created a user account that will actually then allow us to create projects within AppWriter. you can you can even add uh, additional project uh, user user accounts uh as you use the uh, app right up for your team members. So I'm just going to create a project uh, now, and I'm just going to call this project uh, my first uh, project. So there you have it, I've successfully installed app right and I've successfully created a project. So that's been it guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.